Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. We are truly delighted this morning that you have come and joined with us in our morning service. We are asking you to just sit and enjoy and delight yourself in the worship. This morning promises to be a very interesting morning for someone who is listening to us. I want to be ministering this morning from the book of Mark chapter 5 verse 1 to 15 and I want to speak on the subject liberation in Jesus Christ. So my friends enjoy, be blessed and I believe that someone will be liberated in Jesus name. Again we have a wonderful opportunity to return thanks to almighty God for all his benefits. He is indeed the potter, we are the clay and he shapes us he molds us as he sees fit. May we be able to fulfill his plan for our lives. As we sing together, the Potter's hand, I pray your hearts will be blessed today. In Jesus' name. We sing. Beautiful Lord, wonderful Savior, I know for sure all of my days are held in your hands, crafted into your perfect plan. You gently called me into your presence guiding me by your holy spirit teach me dear lord to live all of my life through your eyes i'm captured me apart I know you're drawing me to yourself lead me Lord I pray Lord just take me and mold me Oh, 
on me Lord use me fill me I give my life to the potter's hand call me Lord call me and guide me lead me walk beside me I give my life to the potter's hand take me mold me take me and mold me use me says I'll follow with rejoicing the future lies unseen ahead certainly holds I know not what but still I know I need not dread for Jesus indeed faileth not circumstances have certainly come up that we did not expect but we put our future in God's hand praise the Lord we sing the future lies unseen ahead in holes I know not what but still I know I need not dread for Jesus faileth not I'll follow him with rejoicing with rejoicing rejoicing I know he safely will lead me to my Eternal hope. Does he not know what I shall meet upon life's rugged way? Will he not guide my halting feet less from the path I stray? I'll follow him with rejoicing, with rejoicing, rejoicing. I know he safely will lead me to my eternal home. No matter how things look to me, nor if they threaten so, I know my way prepared shall be for Christ's reason before. And I'll follow him with rejoicing. With rejoicing, rejoicing, I know he safely will lead me to my No matter how things look, no matter how things look to me, nor if they threaten so, I know my way prepared shall be for Christ. Rejoice! 
rejoicing, rejoicing. I know He safely will lead me to my eternal home. The glory of eternal dawn, the glory of eternal dawn shines from His smiling face. So trust me, I follow on with a heart made strong by grace. With rejoicing, rejoicing, I know He safely will lead me to my eternal home, and I will follow Him with rejoicing, with rejoicing, rejoicing, I know He safely will lead me to my eternal home. I know. I know he safely will lead me to my eternal home. I know he safely will lead me to my eternal home. To my eternal home. To my eternal home. To my eternal home. Lord, 
when toil and trouble meeting there to take as from the Father's hand one by one the days, the moments fleeting till I reach the promised land oh help me Lord when toil and trouble meeting there to take us from the Father's hand one by one the days the moments fleeting till I reach the promised land so help me Lord when toil and trouble meeting there to take us from the Father's hand one by one the days the moments fleeting till I reach the promised land till I reach
The Caribbean Atlantic Assembly of the Church of God invites you to join us for Summerfest 2020 online from August 1st to 5th, 2020. This will be a groundbreaking kingdom encounter. The Caribbean Atlantic Assembly, 43,000 members, 355 congregations, 15 islands and countries, Antigua, Barbados, Bermuda, Cayman Islands, Curacao, Grenada, Guyana, Haiti, Jamaica, St. Kitts, Nevis, St. Thomas, St. Vincent, Trinidad, and Tobago. The regional youth have chosen their speakers. The regional men have chosen their speakers. The regional women have chosen their speakers. Trainers have been selected for our leadership conferences, and we are ready to rumble. Join us online, Facebook, Carbon Atlantic Assembly, COG, and on YouTube, CAA TV, Caribbean Atlantic Assembly. August 1st to 5th, advancing the work of the kingdom in the Caribbean Atlantic region. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks. We give you honor. We give you glory. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Father, this morning we come before your presence. Lord, we are thanking you for your goodness towards us. We are praying even now, Lord God, that as I stand behind this sacred desk, that, Father, you will give me the interpretation. You will give me, Father God, the revelation. I pray, Lord God, that you would enlighten my spiritual eyes. I pray, Lord God, that what will flow from my lips, Father, will minister grace to those who will listen to us today in the name of Jesus. Father, your word says it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, saith the Lord. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, that your word, which you will send forth, forth today will not return void but lord it will accomplish that which it is sent forth to do in the name of jesus so we thank you and we bless your name add your blessings father to your word in jesus name amen and amen this morning i want to speak to you on the subject the liberating power of christ the liberating power of christ and when we think of the word liberating, the word liberating means providing a release. Let me say that again. Providing a release from a situation which limits freedom of thought and behavior. Let me just read that again. Providing a release from a situation which limits freedom of thought or behavior. This morning, we believe that somebody that is here in this service is going to be set free, that is going to be released from a thought and a behavior. The chapter that I mentioned earlier in my welcome from Mark chapter 5, verse 1 to 15, we are told that this chapter is called the home of the incurables. It deals with three cases that are given to us. And I want to look at one of those cases because it shows to us, in humanly speaking, that there, there, there seems to be no cure for these things which are mentioned within this chapter. These three would have been considered impossible. But this morning, I want to assure you that with God, all things are possible. As we are focusing on this chapter, there is one individual or individuals because in Mark it makes mention of one man. But in the other gospels it talks about two men who are possessed with demons. It refers to a person, a man who has demons that are called legions. And in this situation we see that this man is considered an outcast. He is outcast from his family. He's outcast from his society. He is living among the dead, a symmetry and we today recognize that there are people who are living in situations that will be considered 
dead. But uh, I want to assure you this morning that even as Jesus Christ approached this poor man, I want to say that Jesus will approach your situation. No matter how desperate it is, I want to tell you this morning that Jesus Christ can make a difference in your life. Hallelujah. We are told that in this story, there are three different forces at work in this chapter. Number one, we want to look at Satan. Now, I know that many people don't like to hear about us, the preachers, talking about Satan. But I want you to know that Satan is real. The Bible tells us that Satan, he is a thief. His ultimate purpose is to destroy lives. And the Bible tells us in John 10.10 10, that the thief come not but to steal, to kill, and destroy destroy that is his purpose to destroy our lives to thief to steal from us the things that are important but glory to God we have a savior that is able to give life into your situation we are told how these men were possessed by demons we do not we are not told how demons entered and took control of their lives we can probably say it is a result of yielding to sin when we think of demons demons are unclean spirits that live in the lives of people and also cultivate sinful practices you may wonder why a man will do a certain act or a certain deed but if you really look deeply into the situation you will realize that there's something that is going on in the life of that individual that is called causing them to cultivate sinful practices. We are told that Satan was in control of this man's life of our or these men he was in control they could not help themselves they were robbed of their sanity they were robbed of their self-control they were robbed of the joy of home and fellowship and families and friends as we see the enemy he is destroying their lives the enemy today is destroying the lives of individuals he's taking away the joy out of our homes homes where there's confusion homes where there's strives where families are rising up against each other even in our society today we recognize that there is a move of darkness across the land and I'm saying to us this morning that it is the result of Satan operating within these things they lost their decency. We are told that they were roaming between the tombs, that they lived between the tombs, and that they were naked. They were like animals. They were screaming. They were cutting themselves. That somebody says they were being a menace. And they frightened the citizens of the community. They lost their peace. They lost their purpose for living. It is the result of the enemy being in control of their lives. We are told in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 to 9. We are told that Satan is like a lion seeking who he may devour. So the enemy was devouring the lives of these men. He works in life not to give life. He works in life not to give peace. He doesn't work to bring hallelujah joy into our lives but his ultimate goal is to destroy us. When the people saw these men they were like monsters to these individuals to the people that lived in the community they were monsters people fear them but glory to God these men were about to be changed 
change by the power of Jesus Christ. And today, my friends, hallelujah, you, you those who are listening to this service this morning, you are about to be changed by the power of Jesus Christ. From the time that Jesus came on the scene, hallelujah, there was going to be a change. And today, if you will open up your hearts and allow Jesus Christ into your situation, he will bring a change. He will bring transformation into your lives. So Satan is one of the first of the forces that we see operating within the text. Number two, we want to look at society. We are told that these men or this man we are told of in the text has within him legions. Um, when we look at the Roman culture, it would have been considered that 6,000 men were a part of the Roman legion. So that will give you an idea of the amount of demonic that was within the life of these men. But society tried to solve the problem. So often we expect society to transform. So often we think that society has the answers to our problems. I'm not saying that society will not accomplish tasks that is set out to be done. But society isolated these men because the problem was so severe. They said that they bind these men with chains and with shackles. What society taught that the best way of taming these men or these spirits is by putting them in shackles and in chains. I know of lately that we have been having marches all over the world and uh, the whole talk of Black Lives Matter and the whole talk of racism. But I want to enlighten you this morning, my friends, that racism is not a man. Racism is not a color, but racism is a spirit. And we will try in all efforts as a community or a society to bring this spirit and lock it in chains and in shackles and think that this will solve the problem but my friends the chains are not going to solve the problems the shackles the debates the, the, the trying of coming up with solutions will not solve the problem the problem solver is Jesus Christ with all the scientific achievements hallelujah society still cannot cope with the problem that is caused by Satan. Yes, we thank for those who, with all their efforts, try to bring all kinds of solutions to problems and situations that we face in our schools. Uh, people come up with all types of solutions to help individuals who have problems, young men who have problems and young ladies that have problems and marriages that have problems, husbands and wives. They look for all types of solution. They will try to do in community service and try to help the older folks and, and go to help persons with their school items and, and try to build up the morale of the nation but I want us to understand this morning that that is not enough when something is spiritual it takes for a spiritual power to bring change into the situation yes society is restricted yes they try to put protection and we will put protection in our communities. We will try to set up in our communities watchdogs and, and people that will look out for um, suspicious activity and so on and so forth. People would put up cameras 
um, on their homes and people will put in fancy devices in their homes. I'm not saying that you cannot protect your possessions. Hallelujah. But I'm saying to us this morning that when an individual or when a problem is under the power of the enemy, Cameras cannot change it. Security dogs cannot change it. We must confess that society can only permanently solve the problem. They don't have it. They can't deal with the devil who is the terrorist and the one that brings people, victims, into chains and shackles. The people are powerless to help this man. They see how they behave. They see how the enemy, they, they're not even looking at uh, as an enemy, but they're seeing it as a, a problem on the outside. My friends, today, demon possession is a real phenomenon. It was prevalent in the days of Jesus, and it is prevalent within our days. When we look at these lives of these individuals, these individuals were in a state of defilement, which is a horrible state to be in. And demonic is one that will bring defilement into the lives of individuals. The truth of this man is revealed in those words, tombs and chains, tombs and chains. The possess of the enemy in the life of these men drove them into a life of the cemetery. They were living among the tombs. And in those days, we are told that people were usually buried not buried in the ground, but within tombs that were carved out into the sides of mountains. So you will get an a, 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 a actual vigil in your mind of how this man and these men were among the tombs and how they would have been able to have access to dead bodies and dead corpses. They played with bones. Uh, decaying corpse and when we think of sin sin possesses the heart of the lost sinner which drives him to spend his days and years spiritually dead these men are in darkness we are told that the lost hates things that pertain to light Matthew 4 and verse 16 says the people who were sitting in darkness saw great light. And those who were sitting in the land and the shadow of death upon them a light dawn. We are told that they sat in darkness. John 3 and verse 19 tells us this is the judgment that the light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds are evil. And verse 20 says, For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light, for the fear of their deeds will be exposed. So a man hates the very thing that will give him life, which is light. And obviously, persons who don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, will hate those that love God and know God. Of course, they will hate the work of the Lord. They will not want to hear the church come and have open air or make or do witnessing in the community. You will often sit and you will try to encourage an individual to give their life to Christ, but they will say, I have no time for that. Or they will say, I don't want to hear that about Jesus. I don't want to hear that about the gospel because they prefer to live in darkness and in darkness there's recklessness and within darkness there is the grip of death and darkness we put institutions in place as a society we have jails institutions in place but we try to deal with an outward manifestation 
which are signs of an inward manifestation. Man's effort to try to cure his own depravity is only treating symptoms. The effort can never be made to change the condition of man. Only one person or only one thing can change the condition of man. And when we look back into Genesis, we will see that as Adam and Eve ate of the fruit that was forbidden, is when sin entered into the world and into the lives of individuals. And because of that, there is an inward problem that can be only, only be changed by the power of Jesus Christ. So the force of Satan is mentioned. The force of the society is mentioned. But there is a third point, And this will bring, this will bring encouragement. This will bring to you, hallelujah, that there is a problem solver, the Savior. When Jesus Christ stepped out of the boat, and as he entered on the scene, and Jesus wants to enter on the scene of your life today. He wants to come and make a difference in your life today. Society cannot solve it. Hallelujah. And Satan is going to make it worse. But the Savior is going to bring a difference in your life. Today I stand before you like how Peter and John. Hallelujah. In the book of Acts. When they were going to the hour of prayer in the temple. And they came across this beggar man that was laid at the gate beautiful daily. And we are told that when Peter and John looked upon this man. There is this man expecting to receive something from Peter and John. But here it is that Peter says unto them, hallelujah, he says unto the man, silver and gold have I none. Or in other words, I don't possess this silver and gold, but such as I have, I give unto thee. And the scripture says that Peter declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In other words, Peter was saying, I don't have what you want, but I have what you need. And this morning, my friends, as we bring this service to you, we don't have silver or gold, but there's something that we have, and that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing that can stop Jesus from coming and make a difference in your life. There's no storm. There is no grave sight. There is no demonic that can stop Jesus Christ from bringing deliverance into your life. Hallelujah. And this morning, we want you to know, praise God, as we declare it through the airways, that what is happening in our world today, there is someone that can change it. And that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus came, he spoke to the demonic. He approached that situation. It did not change Jesus' mind. Oh, here it was. People were backing away from this man or these men but Jesus did not back away. What we are told about these men is so evident in today that people look upon the lives of those who are in conditions or might be alcoholic, might be a drug addict, might be a gangster, maybe somebody that is wearied in their thinking and in their lifestyle and they look upon them and say there is no hope for that person. There's no change that can come in that person's life. But I want to disagree this morning because Jesus Christ can change that individual. Jesus can change the outcast. Many of you that are listening this morning might feel as though you are an outcast and you may feel that nobody cares about you. Nobody loves me. Nobody appreciates me. Nobody is, is looking after my 
my well-being and therefore you may feel as though you will give up on life you may feel as though you may want to commit suicide what is the reason what is the purpose of living I have been born in this situation and when I look at my own life as an individual I could say as well that I felt as though I had no purpose that I had no cause but I want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ that he has made a difference and if Jesus can make a difference in my life Jesus can make a difference in your life he can change your situation he can turn it around the problems hallelujah that you're facing give it to Jesus Christ this morning we are told that the men run they're running not because they want to run but the demonic that is within them causes them to come to Jesus and those spirits that spoke out of the man confess the Savior we are told in verse 7 that they cried out with a loud voice and said what have I to do with thee Jesus son of the most high hallelujah the very demonic made confession of the savior james 2 19 tells us that the demons believe and do tremble they knew that this was the savior they knew that he had authority over their lives and this morning my friends jesus has the authority to bring change in your life jesus has the authority glory to god to turn around your problems today looking as though changes were not going to come here it is in this life with all the problems alcoholic addictions murders and the list goes on and people say nothing good is going to come out of that situation nothing good is going to come out of that person's life but as somebody says we see a drunkard but Jesus sees a deacon we see a drug addict but Jesus sees a preacher we may see a horlick but Jesus sees a choir member hallelujah Jesus Christ sees what we do not see he sees that an individual life can be turned around by his power hallelujah and Jesus cured this man by casting out the spirits in his life hallelujah Jesus cast him Jesus cured him and this morning Jesus Christ can cure your life he can cure your problems not only did Jesus Christ cure him but Jesus Christ clothed him because when those legions spoke out and they wanted Jesus Christ uh, to cast them into the herd of swines. Jesus Christ commanded those spirits to come out of that man in the name of Jesus. And this morning, uh, as I stand behind uh, the sacred desk, uh, I stand in the authority of Jesus Christ. Uh, and I want to command every unclean spirit in the name of Jesus to come out uh, in Jesus name come out of that marriage come out of that life in the name of Jesus set the captive free the Bible says he that the son sets free is free indeed and in the name of Jesus in the authority of Christ we're commanding the devil to go in the name of Jesus we want the enemy to go so that you can be cured so that you can be clothed but not only was this man clothed but he was calm when the people of that community came they were so afraid you would think that they will rejoice but when they came on the scene and there's always a scene when Jesus Christ is in the midst hallelujah there's always a scene when Jesus Christ hallelujah comes into a problem 
when Jesus saves your life and change your life there will be a scene people will look at you and say wait a minute wasn't that the same man that used to steal wasn't that the same man that I saw in the rum shop drinking is that the same young man that I knew would steal from people's homes and people will wonder in themselves what has happened to the life of this individual there has been a change that has come he is so calm and when the people come and they see this man they wondered wasn't this the same demonic wasn't this the same lunatic wasn't this the same man that society held in chains and held in shackles and he burst asunder the chains and the shackles wasn't this the same man that society tried to tame wasn't this the same man that they tried to put in an institution wasn't this the same man they will say that came in a family they weren't educated their father didn't have much their mother didn't have much but here is this man hallelujah that was under the control of the enemy that Jesus Christ brought the release into his life and this morning my friends Jesus Christ can make a difference in your life even those who are saved this morning and you're faced with a crisis you're faced with difficulties I'm saying to you as well that Jesus Christ can change the situation don't give up don't give in because there is a savior that can bring a change to your situation this morning someone that can liberate you hallelujah somebody that can set the record straight somebody that can cause you and cure you and bring you to a place of calmness this morning hallelujah i trust my friends that indeed your hearts have been blessed by the word of god today i trust today and i want to leave with you a few words of the hymn he is just the same today. The psalm they say, have you heard of Jesus? How he came from heaven to earth with a name of mighty virtue, true by very humble birth. When the world was held in bondage on the Satan's dismal sway, Jesus healed their dread diseases. He is just the same today. And the refrain says, he is just the same today. He is just the same today. Yes, he healed in Galilee, set the suffering captive free. And he is just the same today. Let me just give you one more verse. Do you see the people gathered around that great and holy man, bringing all the sick and suffering, coming to him all who can? See him look with great compassion as they fainted, by the way, you may be fainting this morning. How he called them gently to him. He is just the same today. I pray indeed that your hearts have been truly blessed. And even at this moment as I will bring this sermon to a close, I want to also invite you to join with me as we pray, I want you to probably stretch your hand out to the device that you're using. And by an act of faith, we want to pray that the liberating power of Christ will come into your life, will come into your home and make a difference. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today, Lord God. For all that you have done and for what you are going to do even now in these next few moments. Father God, there is somebody on the other side of this camera. There's somebody on the other side, oh Lord God, who is in pain like how this man was in pain. 
Lord, there is somebody who is in torment, like how this man was in torment. Oh, Lord God, they do not know what to do. They don't know where to turn. They don't know whom to go to, Lord God. Father, they may have tried all types of things. They may have tried drugs. They may have tried, Father, drinking. Lord, they may have gone, Father God, to the highest places of institution of learning. Lord God, to bring change in their lives. But Father God, it might have failed them. But today, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we have preached your word, Lord, as we have sung, oh Lord, in the songs this morning, oh God, Father, we know, hallelujah, that you can bring a change, that you can bring a difference in the life of this individual. Oh Lord God, I pray that you will visit with them right now, wherever they are, oh Lord God. I pray that you will touch them in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you will bring liberation, oh God, into their lives today. Lord, I pray that you will break the shackles and the chains that society cannot break. I pray that you will bring release. I pray that you will bring calmness, that worried heart. Lord, that troubled heart this morning, God. People that are wondering, God, what they're going to do in the environment that they're in. But Lord, we present Jesus. We present the Savior. We praise, Lord God, that you will even touch any individual who may not be feeling well in their bodies, who may be afflicted, oh God, by various diseases and impediments. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we are trusting that, God, you will touch that individual, that you will bring healing, that you will bring restoration. Lord, I pray that that young man that is running up and down, that young lady, oh God, who may have backslidden from the church, oh God, I pray that you will touch them right now and, Lord, clothe them and cure them and calm them, oh Lord God. We thank you today in the name of Jesus for all that you have done. We thank you and we rejoice with that individual today, Lord, for the victory is theirs today. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. The word of God requires a response. Always does. God promised his word will never, ever return void. And so we sing today as we reflect on the word of God trusting that your heart has been blessed and you would indeed make the positive response to his word. This song says, In Christ alone, my hope is found, my light is found. Whatever you need can be found in Jesus. As we sing again, trust your hearts are blessed in Christ alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground. Firm to the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When cares are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless this gift of love and righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save till on that cross as Jesus died the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid Then bursting forth 
in glorious day. Up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since Christ has lost his grip on me, for I am his and he is mine. But in the precious Commence my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever block me from his hand. Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ. No power of hell. No power of hell. No scheme of Till you return or cause me home here in the fall of God. No power, no power of hell, no scheme of man can ever block me from his hand. Till he return or cause me home here in the power of God. We thank you again for viewing our program this morning. We trust that your hearts have been blessed and that even as we have ministered to you, that you are feeling the liberating power of Jesus Christ. We want to hear from you. Drop us a line. You may need counseling or prayer. We are here waiting and willing to help you move forward in the name of Jesus. Do have a wonderful day. Do have a blessed day in Jesus' name.